Look at Tov today's stop this stop. Yun base in conditions of the first time for Elizabeth ben Ruma and Yosef Jil ben Chaim Michal. From the two, that's about 10, 12 lines down to the page. Ma'isa b'chamei shoshim. The Mishnah told us a story where a man married five women simultaneously. And the question came up before the rabbis. And what did they decide? That uh, the, the three are married. The three who are not related to one another. Uh, but the two who are sisters are not married at all. Amarav, Sarav says, You see, four things can be derived from this Mishnah. But he only mentioned three. And that was the only he had in his hand three. He said there's four things, obviously, you can learn in the Mishnah, but he only specified three. We'll explain why, what happens with the fourth one. You could see, number one, that Perish Shvias, which you might say Perish Shvias are only to be, uh, since they're Hefker, maybe they're only supposed to be eaten. It's not like it's yours. You can go, like, you know, in Perish Shvias, you're supposed to be Mafker, all the Perish in your field. Fruits and vegetables, everything is supposed to be Hefker. So you might say, okay, it's mutter to eat them. Anybody can take them to eat them, but they don't, can they own them like it's their own property? Yes. Since it's Hefker, whoever picks them up can own them and can be Mukadash and Isha, can marry, can betroth a woman with those payers. So that's number one when you see, because he said this guy was Mukadash, uh, the five women, and he tried to Mukadash the five women with payers Shvias. So Mukadash payers Shvias, number Mukadash. That's number one you see. Number two, Shmam, you know, you see another thing, the kitchen begesel, ain't Mukadash. Why? You, let's say your Makadash Nisha was something that's stolen. So you might say it has to be yours, right? The rabbi always says, is it yours? Did you buy it? Is it yours? So he says, if you Makadash Begezel, not Makadash. Is that such a big Kiddush? The Kiddush is Afilu Begezel Didah. Because it says that the Paris belonged to the women, except except that it was Paris Shviyas. So therefore, it didn't really belong to him. It was Hefker. So it's Mashma that it's the only reason it works is because it's Hefker, it's Shviyas. But if it wouldn't be Shvias, you couldn't be Makadash with them, even if it's theirs. And they're mochu you. You think you, you go to a woman and you stole her fruits and you say to her, I'm Kadash with you. Kadash with you. You might say, well, if she accepts it, obviously she's mochu. She doesn't mind that you took the payers, right? She presumably knows also they have to belong to you. So, Lahari, that should work. This is no. Kitchen Begesel, Enemu Kadash, Zafil even if even if she's mochu, even if she's a parent mochu, it doesn't work. Why? How do we how do we see it in the Mishnah? Midiktani Shalahem Isa it says it belonged, the parents belonged to the women. Bishal Shviyas Isa, it was Shmita fruits. Tamar Shviyas, the reason why it worked in the Mishnah. It did work except for the two women. The other three wouldn't work. So time of the Shviyas, the Hefker is Hefker. That's why it worked. Even though it was theirs, but since it was Shviyas, it was Hefker, and therefore you could take it. Had the Shar Shani it was the other years of the Shemitah, the first through six years of the Shemitah cycle. When it wasn't Shemitah fruits that it belonged to them, lo, it wouldn't work. Why wouldn't it work? They were mochel. What's the difference if it was Shemitah or not? If he went in and he stole the Paris from them and he gave it to Mikadash, I'm Mikadash all of you with this basket of Paris. There's at least enough pruta for all of them, for each of them in there. What would be the problem? The harp they accepted they were mochel. He shows you that it doesn't work either. In other words, that they don't agree to it. They don't agree to give it to you. If you stole something from somebody, and they agreed, okay, keep it. I don't care. Then it's yours. So, but over here you see, if we cottage something which is so stolen from the woman that you're betrothing, it doesn't automatically, the fact that she accepted it doesn't mean that she agrees or that uh, she's mocho what you stole. And it's, therefore, it's not yours. Therefore, you are Makadosh Nisha. That's the second thing you see. The first thing you see is that what? That you can cottage pay or shvias, even though you might say it's only for eating. You're not supposed to do business with them. Marry somebody with it. No, you're allowed to. The second thing that you see is that if you Makadish with Gezel, who wouldn't be for Shemitah, it would be Gezel. So let's say she's Mochel, if she accepted it, no, it still wouldn't work. We'll see another opinion, possibly, that this doesn't always, this isn't always the case. In certain cases, if you're Makadish, some, you're Makadish with something that you stole from her, it may work. Here he says, you see, the mission doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this gets us into Baba Kama. We're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. We're not okay. starting Baba Kama for another couple of months, right? Super, super okay, why? Because food. there, okay, so there there's two things. It's called Yush, and you give up, and also Shinu Masa. In Makadish and Ishi, you, if you, you were to something with, either, with a Shinui, Shinu Rishus, or like a different ownership, or Shinu Masa, if you changed it, and the owner was Miyayish. We were not talking about that. You just took it from her and gave it to her. So let's keep it simple. You gave it to her. She's mochel. 
Now, in certain cases, if you knew for sure that she was mocho, which says, you know, keep the payers, and then it's Mekadosh, then it's okay. But Rabbi Yerus says, Stam Mekadosh was Nisha with Gezel, if he stole it from her, it wouldn't work. Only wor- the only reason it works on our mission is because it was Shemitah, so it wasn't really hers. But if it would have been hers, it wouldn't have worked. And we'll see a qualification for that in a few minutes. That's the second thing we learn from the mission. The third thing you see is that a woman can be a shliach for another woman, even where through this action, she becomes a co-wife. Many times we say that there are certain, you've we learn there are certain women who aren't believed to testify about a woman. For example, a man goes overseas and he doesn't show up. Question, did he die or not? There's no aid, right? Woman's in the guna. So we believe even one aid, right? That's the rule. You believe even one person because Mishim Guna, Gil Barabanan, is a chazaka that she's going to check it out. And, you know, the wife will check it out because she doesn't want to get married to somebody else and then have her first husband show up and really be messed up. So we believe even one aid, even a woman. What about a mother in law? Right? Or a sister in law? You don't believe that. You don't believe them. There's certain women because they, they don't mind messing her up. You know, the, you know, I worked my whole life, raised the kids, sent them to college, sent them to medical school, to law school, making a nice living, and she's getting everything, and I'm living in poverty over here. So you don't believe the mother-in-law over here or or a co-wife. You know, co-wife. You know, look, I'm fighting with her for the attention of my husband. Here you see that even though it couldn't be believed as a witness, but over here as a shliach, she could be a shliach. Because what happened over here? We see over here he gave her, gave them the um, the story with the five women um, and the and, and he gave the what of them accepted it for all of them not like they all accepted the basket together one of them accepted for all of them you accepted for all of them your shliach for the other women who are, who are thereby becoming your co-wife yeah because there's a mice involved then it's okay if it would be giving Adis, maybe not. You wouldn't believe her. But if we're here, so you see three things from our Mishnah. Number one, you can Kaddish Kaddish even though you might say Parish is only for eating. No, if you acquire them from Hefker, they're yours. No problem. Second thing you see is that it's only because it's Shmita that it works. It wouldn't be Shmita and you stole it from these women, even though they accepted the Kedushin. No, it's not Kedushin, it's Kzela. We'll see in a qualification soon. And the third thing you see is that the shliach could be a, a woman could be a shliach for her for her for her associate for another woman even if she becomes a co-wife through this action. That was the three things that Rav says you see from the Mishnah. But there were four. He said there were four, but I only had three. What's the fourth? Midach Mahi Kedushin Shemus Ruin Libi. Our discussion of yesterday, a kedushin which cannot be consummated. Why? Because you married one of two sisters, or you married a woman and her daughter simultaneously. Well. That's a condition that can't be consummated because you can't, you don't know who you're married to, right? And if you're married to one, maybe you, you can't marry the other one. You can't sleep with the other one. So it's a condition shame Masur and Labia. Is that a condition? We had a machlok. He says that Bai says it is a condition. He probably says it's not. My condition shame Masur and Labia. Why don't you mention Benach Shiva? Why don't you count that one too? The answer is Mishum the Masafkle. Rob wasn't sure who the Allah is like. We paskin on this page right before the two dots. So what we paskin like a Bai. This is one of the cases, one of the six cases in Chas. Of the Al Kagam, this is the quote from Kagam that we pass in, like Abaye, that Yish, that uh, the Reth, not Yish, let me ask, that's the first thing with Yaal. The, the Kuf is Kedushin Shane and Masur and Labia. Abaye says it's a good Kedushin. It's a Kedushin mar- married two women simultaneously. It's a good Kedushin. Oh, wait a minute. No, he didn't really say that. He didn't really say that. The Mishnah said if you marry two women simultaneously, it doesn't work. You know why? Even a buyer will say because koshen and bezachusa and basacha. Since you can't do them consecutively, you can't do them simultaneously. Even a buyer's motive to that. The question was though, not when you married two women simultaneously, two sisters simultaneously. You married one of two girls. You don't know which one. You married one of two babies or one of two yeah, ten year old tail. I'll marry one of your two girls, and he accepted kedushin. It was we didn't specify which girl. That's because it's Shemus or Labia. Are you married to the nine-year-old or the ten-year-old? If you're married to the nine-year-old, you can't sleep with a ten-year-old. If you're married to the ten-year-old, you can't sleep with the nine-year-old. That's because Shemus or Labia. A bias says, you know what? It's a good condition, though. Therefore, you'd have to give both of them a get because you don't know who you, you can't sleep with either one. That's what a bias holds. Rub holds no. Kedushin Shemus or is not a condition at all. You don't even need to get. So the answer is, is that yes, in our Mishnah, you definitely see that the question of Kedushin Shemus or Labia. But is it a condition or not? A bias says it is a good condition. 
Why? Because he says, oh, only if you marry them simultaneously, it doesn't work. But if you were to marry one out of the two, even though you don't know which one it is, it would work. That's how Bible is the mission. Rav says, no, the mission means if you marry them one out of the two, it's as if you marry them simultaneously and it doesn't work. So that's why Rob did mention, because not sure is Allah like a buyer like Rava. So therefore, therefore he didn't count it. And as, there's a fourth thing that you could learn from the Mishnah, but he doesn't know how to learn it. So he learned like a buyer, showing that what? That uh, that Kedushan Shein Masur is a good Kedushan. Only if you marry simultaneously, it doesn't work. Because Kol Sheino B'Zechuzah, Eino Vasachas. But as far as Kedushan Masur it would work if you married one out of two. Rav says, no, one out of two is the same as simultaneously, and it doesn't work at all. He saw like Rav Zeyrav. Rav Zeyrav, you know, went up to Eretz Yisrael. Remember the famous line that he went up to Eretz Yisrael and he was must follow that he should forget everything they learned in Chutz Laaretz. He saw like Rav Zeyrav, he went up to Eretz Yisrael, Omer la Hashemayit, he said, this one, he said, this one, what do you mean, what the Rashi tells us, it's the second of the three things that Rav was sure about. Rav said there's four things to learn from the Mishnah, but the fourth one, he wasn't sure which way to go. Shushim Masum would be as like a buyer's like Rav, but the first three, the second one of which was what? That if you're Makadish with Gezel, ain't a Makudeshes. Even if it's her Gezel. To understand if I stole from somebody else, right? Some somebody else, and I gave it to her, so I, it's not mine. I can't be Makadish, but I Makadish with her, and she accepted it. It means that she was Mocha me. Still, it doesn't work. So he said this in front of Rabbi Yochanan, who was the Mardar, 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 and Eretz Yisrael. Omer Lei, Abai said, Mi Omer Apach, did Rab really say that? Is that what he said? The Makadish of Gezel doesn't work, even if it's hers? Says the Gemara, what do you mean? Rab is, Rab Yochan is questioning, did Rab say that? Ulo Omar? Didn't Rab Yochan himself say the same thing? Rab Yochan, Gazav on the of Bailam, if you stole something. Now, I'm going to use a different, be careful with the language of Gezel. Gezel is stealing something. Like, I come to you and I grab it out of your hand, either with a gun or not with a gun, but I took it from you face to face. Geneva is like burgling, that's different. So Gazav on the Sasha Bailam, if I stole from you and the Bailam was not Niyayish, he didn't give up hope of, re- of getting it back. I stole something and the owner was not me. Aish. Neither one could be Maktish. Let's say I stole your animal. You have a nice cow or a sheep and I want to bring it as a carbon. So I stole it from you. You can't be Maktish and I can't be Maktish. Neither one. I can't be Maktish because it's not mine. I stole from you. You, you didn't give up hope. The zelfish and the one, the owner can't be Maktish because it's not his. So what do you see over here? That he also is, if you stole something and you weren't the Aish, it doesn't belong to you. So what's the problem? We have Rav also. So Rabbi Yochanan also, why did Rabbi Yochanan, so to speak, say, did Rav really say that? If you're Makadosh with something that was stolen, it's not a good Kedushan? Did Rav really say that? You see that from the Mishnah? That, it, that it's not a good Kedushan? Uh, uh, why was he questioning that? He himself holds that if you stole something, the guy wasn't the Aish, it's not yours. He can't be Makadosh. This is what Rabbi Yochanan meant to say to Rav Zeyra. Me, Omar Rav Kavasi, oh, I didn't know that Rav held like me. Not to say, could Rav have said something like that? That's not what he meant to say. Rabbi Yochan also is he, that you stole something if you got, the owner was not Mi'ayish, it's not yours. He just meant to say, did Rav really hold like me? Okay, so what do we see? Rabbi Kaddish with Gezel, it doesn't work. Rav holds that way. Rabbi Yochan would say the same thing too. He was talking about being Makdish, an animal to the base of Mikdash, but it's, or, or uh, other item for Benek Abayas, but the idea is the same. That if you stole something, it's not yours. Mace here's a kasha. Kitsha begezel, the Hamas of Peneva. Let's say you were Makadish or something that you stole. Hamas is also stealing, but with Hamas, you pay for it. You know, you force it like the mafia. They don't just steal it, they pay you for it, but it's against your will. You know, that's Hamas. So Kitsha begezel, the Hamas of Peneva, or you burgled it. Oh, Shechot of Selamiada, or you grabbed a, a dollar out of her hand. The Kitsha or you Makadish, the Makudeshes. So it is Mukudeshis. So you see, hmm? it doesn't belong to it's Mukudeshis. The answer is Hosam Begezel Dida. That's where you stole it from her. You stole it from her and she accepted it. That's a proof that she was Mokho. She was Mia'ish and she may gave it to you. But we, didn't we just say that you see my mission otherwise? We'll see that in a second. But first, the Kash is what do you mean, Kitcha Begezel Hamas? You have O Shechat of Salmiada. A minute can he say for Oshachat of Salam, or you grab the dollar out of her hand, Machal the Rashi begets of Yamas Mashmu as a seal. Mish says that if you stole something or you burgled it or whatever, stole it by, or you paid for it, but you stole it, uh, or you took it from her hand and give her a cash, it works. So what are you there? You saying, well, you stole it from her. What do you mean you stole it from her? The Sefer says, or you took, stole it from her. It's Mashmu that the Rashi speaking, you stole it's done. Machal the Rashi begets of Yamas, we're talking about it's done, you stole it from somebody else. 
is not Kiyushka Mefarish. The Sage is explaining the ratio. Kitsha Begezel becomes of Greneva. If you so if you were Makadashur with either stealing it, right, robbing it, let's call it, robbing it, or Hamas paying for it, but forcibly, forcibly stealing it, we can able to burgle it. Kate, so what's an example? You go Shachata selling the other, you took it out of her hand. Either she didn't realize it or it was either robbery or burglary, but you stole it from her. The kitchen bowl, then it works. Yes, okay. So what do you see over here? That if your Makadash her was something that you stole from her, if you stole from somebody else and the guy wasn't the Aish, of course it's not it's not yours. If he was Yish and like you said, Shina Rishus or Shini Mas, that's different. See, that's both pardon? You stole somebody it doesn't belong to you, right? Yeah. No, no, it belongs to him. It's just not, he can't be makdish it. You can't be makdish an item to the base of Mikdash unless it's your shush, but it still belongs to him. It's still his, yeah, it's still his. So you stole my car, it still belongs to me. You stole my car, it still belongs to me. Not my rishus, but it's still, it's not in the, my, uh, you know, possession. It's not in my possession right now, but it belongs to me. I have title, right? So what, what do you see over here? Here you see from a Kaddish with something that you stole from her. It does work. Says the Gemara on Amadeus and Abamastis and the Gezel Dida. Our mission was also talking about when you stole it from her, right? You say you stole from the mission says you, you stole the pairs from the women. It was Shmita, Shmita. The reason why it works is because it was Shmita, so it was Hefka it didn't really belong to them. Had it not been for Shmita, <clears throat> it wouldn't work. Mastis and the Gezel Dida, the Kamarab, and the Kadeshes. So what's going on over here? You said that what Rav says and Rabbi Yochan says, if you steal something even from her, it wouldn't work, right? Because even if she's Mokhlet, because she didn't really didn't really mean to give it to you, and therefore you were Makadashir with something that was yours. Here it's Mashma, if you stole from her, and she agrees to take it, it would be good. Were they, or was there a Shidduch here? In other words, if she had agreed to marry you in advance, it was already agreement. Then you said, uh, "Honey, give me, give me your, uh, give me your watch over there. I'll, I'll give me your watch. I'll take it from you, and I'll give it back to you. I'll give me a dollar. I'll give it back to you, or a ring, or whatever it was. Then it's a good. Then it's good because there they were. She had already agreed to marry him, so you assume that she was mochel when she when you gave it back to her. But if there was no shit, a or something, but there was no shit. He just went over to five women and said, grabbed their stuff and says, here, marry me.' Then they don't agree, and the answer is that they don't really. They're not really mochel. Had they been mochel, yeah, then it would have been his." I stole, if I stole something from, I stole a ring from a jeweler. And he says, you know, keep it. Of course I could be a Kaddish and Yeshua. So that's the difference. But our mission is speaking about there was no Shidduch in advance. And here they're speaking about there was a Shidduch in advance. And that's why it's a good Kiddush. I a story on the third line. He the Havi, the Mashi Kara, the Meshichla. She was uh, the Maya. She was uh, washing her feet in a... Um, it, it, uh, in, a, in a basin full of water, she was washing her feet. Also, got a man walked over to her, grabbed the dollar from somebody else, <laughs> grabbed the buck, and threw it at her. the to me with this dollar. Also, Gavra, the coming to so the man now came before Rabba to say, "Well, is she my wife? Do I have to give her a get." Amar less the chash Rab Shimon. Nobody, nobody, we don't pay any attention to what Rabbi Shimon said. In other words, Rabbi Shimon says, if I burgled something from somebody, the guy has hope, you know, you call the police in the morning, they always find the uh, perpetrator. It's you, that's usually, <laughs> you have to you fill out their form in triplicate and you can rest assured in a day or two, they'll recover your car or whatever it was, <laughs> right? They'll find it. Uh, if you burgled it, so you don't you don't give up. If it was burgled from you, but if it was robbed from you and you couldn't stand up and stand up to the guy, you know, you figure, you know, you couldn't overpower him. You figure you give up. I mean, he took it from me at force. What am I going to do? So that's what Reb Shimon says. So he says, "Less the chashlo Reb Shimon don't stand zeli yishbalim. You stole it from me. If you robbed it from me, you give up. We don't hold like Reb Shimon. In other words, you stole the dollar from the guy." He still might get it back from you. He was not, we don't assume that he gave up hope. And there was no Shinui uh, Maisa over here, Avram. There's no Shinui Maisa, Shinui Rishus. And therefore, you're not married. You don't even need to get in this case. That's what he said to this guy. Okay, that's what he said to this guy. Um, uh, Shimon says that, that if he robbed it from you, you assume that he gave up. No, we don't assume that at all. Another story, Hoa Risa, the sharecropper. A sharecropper, what does he mean? He gets a share of the crops. That's why he's called a sharecropper. I mean, he works the land and he gets 20%, 30%, 50%, 50 whatever he gets, he gets to keep 50 cents. So, who Arisa, the Kaddish, he was Makadash Nisha, 
the, the Musa de Samfi with a handful of onions. He took a handful of onions from the field and he says, All right, Mukadesh is sweet. Also, I'm going to Rabba. I'm going to Rabba says, who, who is Mokhul to you? In other words, the onions are partially yours, partially the owner. You just grabbed a bunch. Was he Mokhul? Was the owner of the field? Was he Mokhul you? Did he renounce his share and give it to you? Not good. I didn't believe the Musa if he just took a, gram, a handful because the handful wasn't yet. When you say you get 50%, that means they split it up. You know, they take they take the crops, they bundle them, they cut them down, they bundle them, and they split it 50-50. Here you just grabbed some. Some of that belongs to the owner. Was he mocha? You, you just did it like in a month. Pardon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he says, but, but here it wasn't there. We're going to talk about that. The honey milly bamuza, that's by a handful. Avo Kisha, but if it's a if it's a bunch, a bundled bunch, then Masyomi could say, Anashakli Kisha. Yeah, the 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 the, the, the prepared package, the bundled uh, bunch that I took, I'm entitled to because I get 50%. On An, Anashakli Kisha, I took one bunch. Shakalak Kisha, you could take another bunch. In other words, whatever I take, you get a share. The owner gets a share. Kisha, Kikisha, every bunch is the same thing. Every bundle is the same thing. So that would work. But both these cases, Rubber told the guy, you're not married. Both in the first word, first case, because you stole the money and uh, he wasn't broken. In this case, you stole the onions without first dividing them up fairly. And so when you grabbed the bunch, you weren't giving 50% to the owner. If you bundled them up and cut them down and, you know, package them and, you know, you're going to get half. He's going to get half. Here, you didn't do that. Host or Saya, there was a brewer. They used to hire brewers to uh, manufacture their beer. They used to have date beer in that case, not our kind of hops beer. Ha'u Sarsia, the Kurdish Bafruma de Shikra. He was Makadish and Isha with uh, a certain measure of beer. Asa Mari de Shikra. Now, the owner, now, this guy was a hired hand. He was hired to, to uh, you know, to um, make, to, to brew the beer. And then he was either paid or given a share of the, uh, of the uh, brewed beer. So he was Makadashanisha with this stuff, and he didn't really uh, you know, it wasn't clear that he was at his payment or not. He didn't he didn't formally get this beer, he just took some. Amale, so the owner found him. Amale, why didn't you give him why didn't you give him from this better beer? This is sharper. Oh, what'd you give her that for? Why didn't you give her from this? Also give him for Rabbi says, Well, was it a good marriage? Amr. When a man says, why didn't you take the better ones? That's only when it comes to truma. What do we mean by that? In other words, when you took something without permission, here he didn't take permission to get the beer. So when the owner said, oh, why didn't you take the better ones? He was really being sarcastic. He just says, oh, why didn't you take the better one? Like, you know, oh yeah, you know, he didn't really mean it. So when he said it sarcastically, it's not really a marriage because he didn't really mean to give it to him. I wanted to give you cash. I didn't want you to take the beer. So I said, why don't you take the better one? It's like saying, you know, uh, I didn't want to say, I don't want to say, what'd you take it for? Oh, you could have taken a better one. He was being sarcastic. The only time when the, when the owner says, why don't you take the better ones? When does that work? It's only by Truma. What's the case of Truma? We'll see. Um, we look up and say, is the officer in Truma? Go by the time. We learn a case of Truma. Case said, Om Rutam Shalami Das from Asa Truma. If I come into your field and I know that, let's say, uh, your family, you're not, you're out of town, whatever, your family wants to eat the, the crops. So I take Truma from ISIS for you. So I take the Truma. And um, I, without your not, without your consent, I went and took your truma. Okay, so it said Tom Shlomi Das. It is a good truma. Harish or Latov. I went into your field, bleak it, and I gathered up some of the grain. The Tarum Shlobashus, and I gave truma to the coin without your permission. Im Choshish Mishum Gezel. If there's a concern that the owner was not happy with what you did, in other words, he can. It's like stolen. He wasn't. He didn't consent to what you did. Ain't your muscle truma? It's not a good truma because I I didn't want you to do it. You, you took the, the my best stuff, or you took stuff I didn't want. Maybe you gave too much, right? We talked about truma could be any amount. You gave too much. I'm not happy with that. In love, if there's no chashash of gezel, the you, know, you can tell that the owner's really happy with what you did. Then truma or truma. How do you know if the owner is happy or not? If he consents or if he if he disputes, he's really unhappy with what you did. In love, how do you know? Harisha Balabayas, the owner came home. Umatso, and he found you. Vamar, oh, you gave truma. Vamar lo klach eitz liyavos. Why didn't you take the better stuff? I would have given the coin the better stuff. In mimsu yafos, man. If you find better ones, truma or truma. Here you don't say it was being sarcastic. If you find better ones, maybe he was serious. Oh, you gave this as truma. Why didn't you give the better ones? In love, if 
he didn't, if you don't find better ones, ain't your muscle truma. He's just trying to say, oh, you gave my very best stuff. Maybe why don't you take the better ones? As if to say, oh, had there been better ones, you'd have stolen those, right? Then it's not truma. Let's say the owner added even more to what you gave, then whether the better ones or not, that shows that he's serious. So only over there, if he's not being sarcastic, we assume we assume that he's not being sarcastic. There's reason to believe there are better ones or he adds on to it. But over here, when it comes to anything else, he's not happy with what you did. You took the, you stole some beer. You stole the beer. He's not happy. He just said, why did you take the better one? Mishum Kisufi, he's embarrassed. He doesn't want to say, he doesn't want to confront him and say, hey, you stole my beer. So he said, oh, why don't you take better ones? Who of it? And not at all. All right, says the Mishnah. Now, we know in Kachim, we learned that who eats Kacha Kachim? Kacha Kachim is either, well, if it's an Ola, it can't be eaten at all. Okay, and there's other three other kinds of Kacha Kachim, which are carbon Mincha, it's Kacha Kachim, Achatos, and the Rasham. Who eats that? Only the Kohen. No, regularly it's raw can't eat that. The coin gets to eat it, right? Who eats the kachim column? Well, the coin gets the chazam b'shov. The rest is eaten by the owner. Let's say a carbon shlomim or a toga. Okay, let's say makarish bechelko. You the coin gets his share of the carbonos to eat. Right, the, the kohenim are there. They get to eat. they split up the meat. They get to eat it. And let's say he wants makarish nisha with it. Right, gets a share. He wants makarish nisha with it. How is Anisha there in the Zohar? We'll talk about it. Let's say there's a man there. Maybe there's another coin there. Coin there says, hey, I've got a daughter. Why don't you give me your piece of meat and I'll accept or that. Or a shliach. Or a shliach, right. Or a shliach. It could be a shliach for somebody else, right. Right. So, I'm a kaddish bechelko. Bein kachi kachim bechi kachalim. Whether it's your share of kachi kachim, as we mentioned, a min chachatos or nashim, or kachim kalim, then he gets the chaz of a shok. We're here, Rosh says, we're speaking about uh, a coin. But later on, Rashi the Gemara is going to say by Kachim Kalim, regular meat that uh, that Yisrael eats, right? His carbon shlam eats it. Why? Because our Mishnah holds that when you eat that meat, you're eating Mishlochan Kavod. You're eating God's meat. This is a carbon it belongs to because you're entitled to eat it. It's like I don't know, there's a kiddush and shul on Shabbos, right? You're entitled to eat all you want. You're not entitled to take it home. You don't own it. You're entitled to you. You'll go to somebody's house. You're allowed. They give you the food. It doesn't mean that you can't take the food home with you and, and do with you want, sell it or give it to an isha or whatever. So, that part's clear. There's no machlokas about that. Let's say you're Makadash Isha with Meister Shani. Now, what's the deal with Meister Shani? Meister Shani, this is Meister Meister. Right? So, machlokas, if you've got an isha with it, but what's the basin? What's the, what's the problem with Makadash Isha? It's yours. It's, it's really yours, right? It's really yours, Lachor, but you got to take it up to. You to eat it there. It's in the it's oh, 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 very good. So that's his, that's the machlokas here too in our mission. We're going to see that too. By makash bechalka bekach kash kash. Everybody agrees that when it comes to eating the meat of carbonos, it's not makash. It's not yours. My sushani bein b'shogeg bein b'mezid lo kiddush diver of mayor. Where mayor holds it's mamun gavoa, and therefore it's not yours at all. Yes, you're entitled to take it shlam and eat it. I guess you know mayor. Bishogeg lo kiddish, but mezid kiddish. Or Buddha holds, no, that it belongs to you. It belongs to you. And therefore, if you did it on purpose, you know it's Meiser Shani. And you say to this woman, be kaddish to me with this Meiser Shani. What's the deal with the Meiser Shani? You got to take it to your shalim. Okay, she agrees. She'll take it to your shalim. It's okay. It's yours. You're going to take it to your shalim. She's going to take it to your shalim. If you did it, Bishogeg, it doesn't work, even according to Buddha. Why? Because Bashoge gets a mekachtos. She thinks you're giving her something that she can eat right now. Oh, I love this stuff. I like to eat something right now. She doesn't know that she has to take it to Shalom. That's mekachtos. That's why she's not mukidashis. So her mayor holds it doesn't work anyway because it's mamun gavoa. Like you said, Michael, it's machlok is when it's mamun gavoa. Or Buddha says, no, it's not mamun gavoa. But if you did it Bashoge, she didn't know that it was that it was my sushani. Then you fooled her. What about the hektish? Not. Not chelko, not the chelik of the meat or the mincha that you're going to eat as a coin or as a Yisrael, if it's, a, if it's the meat of the kachim kalim. But you're makash from that hegdish. It was something that, was, that had the hegdish, like bedeka bias. Uva hegdish, but mezid, if you did it on purpose, but mezid, kiddish, it works. Because we'll see, because he also, but mezid, you're moel, and it leaves its state of kedusha. You have, you have to, you're, you're, you're chayiv, you did it for mezid, you're not chayiv to pay, you're chayiv misa. But if you did the hegdish, uh, if you did the mezid, 
So you're machalalit and it's chulin, and therefore it's a good condition according to Rameir. Bishogig lokish, Bishogig, it doesn't work, right? It doesn't work. Why? Because you didn't mean uh, it, it doesn't, it, you're not Makadish and Isha with it because it doesn't, you're not more of the Shogate. It's uh, the Meila doesn't help to take it out of the state of, of Hekdish. Rabbi says the reverse. The Shogate, Kiddish, Bemeza, low Kiddish. You do it for Mezid, it doesn't work, but for Shogate, it does work. And we'll see. We possibly like Rameya when it comes to Mice of Shane. He did it's mom and Gavo, therefore it doesn't work. And in the last case, we'll possibly like Rabbi but the moral will explain Rabbi in detail. First, we're dealing with the first case, though. Our mission has said, that Makadish Bechalko Bain Kachi Kachi Bain Kachi Kalam in Kamadesh is why? Because it's Shulchan Kabbalah. Har Mishnah is going to go to Sigur, the Tanya, Molo, Mal Bashem. If you swear falsely about something that you stole that belonged to somebody else here, Chayim, 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 a carbon for the Shmuel for, for swearing falsely. Let's say it was about a carbon like Kachi Kalam, yours, Mal Bashem, the Rabbis Kachi Kalam, even Kachi Kalam, if you swore about that, Shahim Mamono, the Rabbis Kachi Right, Rabbi Yosegui holds that since it says Bikichesh Bashem, says Bikichesh Bashem, it says Bashem Bikichesh Bamiso, even something which is partially belongs to God gets its Kachin Kalam, that Bikichesh Misa, since it's with your, belongs to you, you're Chay of Ashur there too. So Rabbi Yosegui holds that what? That Kachin Kalam is yours. It's not Maman Gavoa. Kachin Kalam belongs to you. Armish is said to be Kaddish with your share of Kachin Kachin or Kachin Kalam. Samu Kadesh is good, belongs to God. You're eating God's food. Here, Biosi Gluli says, no, that the that, that Kachim Kalim belongs to you. Therefore, you're Chayav Ashvui, even if you swore about mm-hmm. that, even though normally I'm Chayav Ashvui on Hegdish. But if it's since since um, since Kachim Kalim belongs to you, you are Chayav Karpin Shvui for swearing falsely. So Harmish doesn't go like Biosi Gluli. It's more of Biosi Gluli. Why? 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 If you swore falsely about um, a, a, about uh, an animal that belo- was kachim kalim, since it's not uh, hegdish really, it belongs it's hegdish, but it belongs to you while it's alive, then you're chayav shvua. Of a our mission is talking about after you shechted it, after you shechted it, and you're eating it. Whether you're a kohen and eating the chaz of a shok if it's kachim kalim or the regular meat of kachim kachim, or whether you're a Yisrael eating the meat of the Kachim Kalim, Achashita, you're not eating your own, you're eating from Shulchan Gavoah, my time, Kikazachu, Mishulchan Gavoah, Kazachu. And here Rashi says, Mishulchan Gavoah, right? Um, Rashi says, Kikazachu, Ben Kohanim, Bechaz Vashok, Ben Balam, Babas, the Basser. In the Mishnah, we're talking about Kohanim eating the Kachi Kachim, right? Bechelko, Ben Kachi Kachim Kalim, he only has a share of the Chaz Vashok. But here he says, when you're eating, whether uh, here in the, in the Gemara, he says that, uh, if it comes to kachim kach kalim, where the meat's eaten by the balim, even that also, Rashi says, Kika zochu ben kohanim, the chazam shok ben balim babasar, it's mishulchan gavo, it doesn't belong to you, therefore you can't be kadash and with it. Take an ami, proof also is the kani, makadash bechelko, ben bekach kach bech kalim, lo kiddish mamia, your share. And you're not talking about being makadash with the whole animal, a whole animal in a chanami. Uh, it, uh, could work. You makadish and isha with the whole animal that you were makadish for kachim kalim. Maybe that would work because it belongs to you. Makadish with the meat, with the meat that you're entitled to eat, whether it's kachim kach, kachim by a coin or the chaz of a shok of a kachim kalim or the meat, regular meat of a kachim kalim. There, your the kedusha doesn't work because it doesn't belong to you. You're eating God's food. Don't worry about it. Bachem piyosu for Mary after Mary died. Omer and Rabbiuda, 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 and Rameir were disputants throughout Shas. Generally, in a machlok, it's Rameir and Rabbiuda, we pass like Rabbiuda. In our Mishnah, we pointed out when it comes to Meisr Shani, there we pass like Rameir. Okay, but after Rameir died, Rameir told Rabbiuda, told the students, I know what's going to happen now, that they're all going to come to my yeshiva because Rameir died. All you concert committed Rameir, don't let Rameir's students enter the yeshiva. Meisha Kantan Rameir, they're argumentative. I'm not really coming seriously to learn. They're coming to cut my feet off and it's to overwhelm me in a lochus. They're going to try, they're just coming to make trouble. They're just coming to, to ask questions, right? As we say, there's three kinds of people who come to a shir. What are the three kinds? There are some who come to Heron, to hear, to listen to what they can. 
Some come to dare hair to really understand what's going on, and some come to far hair, right, <laughs> to test the the uh, the magashir to see if he knows what's going on. So I know these guys are just coming to test me and to try to overwhelm me with elak uh, of and saying, "But they're only coming." Dachik was the um, the, uh, um, the 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 you know the, the student uh, par excellence of. Of Rameir, we always have Sumpus, uh, Amr Sumpus, Amr Rameir, Sumpus, Tom Rameir. He pushed his way in. Dachat Sumpus, he wanted to come in and learn Ben Ephes. Amr Lahem, Kach Shalom Rameir, this is what Rameir taught me. I'm a Kaddish Bechelko, Ben Gachikach mentioned, come like Kiddish. Doesn't work, right? That's the beginning of our mission. There was really no Machlok. The Har, there was no Machlokus about that in our mission, right? Mayor said, if you're a with the meat of Kachikach or Kachim Kalm, it doesn't work. Cause for me, this is the first review to get angry, Alem. Amr Lahem, didn't I tell you not to let these guys in? They're they're just you know they just uh, want to argue with me. They're they're argumentative. They're not coming to learn. They're only coming to overpower me with their halachas. What sense does it make? What is what sense does Mayor Rebuta says? The mayor says you can kadosh bechelko bein kachim kachim bein kachim kalim. What do you mean kachim kachim? Kachim kachim, you're not even allowed to take out of the azara. Kachim kalim, you can eat in Yerushalayim. Kachim kalim, you can't even take to the azara snoshim. So what do you mean over here? What, what, what are you telling me? You can't be mekadosh and isha with kachim kalim. Bechi isha bazar minayim. What's a woman doing in the azara anyway? Rashi says b'ktani kachim kachim arei imasir chutz azara fi lezar snoshim hey nusam biyotzim b'noshim einich nasus. Law. Women are not allowed in the Azar. Tosis goes to makes it makes a battle here against Rashi. He says that the, the, the mission in Caleb never says that women cannot come in. If they're Tama, they can't come in. He goes through a whole lot of weeks. He just says that the Hisha Bazar doesn't mean women cannot come into the Azar. It means what are they normally doing there? In most cases, women aren't there. It's very rare that they should be there, right? Uh, she was a uh, and, and in fact, women are allowed to do shechita, and shechita is kasha bazaar, which is in the azara. So women could, in theory, women could go into the azara. Uh, what are a sota and a zira come into the azara to take care of their business? So Tosa says, they're not normal. It's not regular for them to be in there. What are you bringing up a case? He says, you're telling me if a if a Makadish Nisha was Kachi Kachim, that means that the woman was in the Azara. What do you give me a case like that for? A far out case. That's unlikely to happen. Um Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi says, What's going on over here? Yomru, Mayor Shacha, Mayor died. The mayor is dead, gone. Yuda Kasher, Yuda's angry. What are you telling me, Allah, Kachi, we're marrying a uh, Kachi Kachi, marrying an Isha with Kachi Kachim? What is she doing over there anyway? I mean, it's not, it's a very, uh, it's not, uh, not likely for her to be there. Yossi Shasak, and I'm going to keep quiet. Divrei Torah Matei Elo. What's going to be with the Divrei Torah? What's the Halacha? It's possible that a man could be in Kaddish Nish. A man could be in the Azara Kohen or a Levi or Israel who's got his business over there, come in for the for Shkita, whatever he's doing over there. Maybe he's in Kaddish Nish there. Maybe he needs a nice Kohen. He wants a nice family. Like you said, Michael, she can make a Shliach for herself. She says, listen, uh, would you be going to the base of English? I know there's a lot of good people over there in the Azara. Fancy people, they're going in, and all the people uh, from around the world are there for the Birkas Kahanim. They're going in there, uh, you know. Why don't you why don't you be a Shlia for me? So it happened, the Kabbalah Dusha Bazar, she can't send the Shlia from Kabbalah Dusha. So why is it so unlikely? It can happen. Okay, and even if you say that it's not likely for her to go in, and uh, maybe a uh, man's not accepting his Kedushan for his daughter over there, and she didn't send a Shlia, but she could push her way in. If she's tar, she can push her way in. So what's the halacha? Tanya Rabbiudomer, Rabbiudashis. Rabbiuda says she is Mukudashis. This Rabbiuda was arguing with her says, Don't let his students in here. What did he say? It's not Mukudashis. Why not? As my Rabbiuda says, she's Mukudashis. Rabbiosi are man Mukudashis. I'm Rabbiochanan. Shnei Mikrecha Darsha. They both Darsha. Now the Rabbiosi agree with our with the Tanakam and our Mishnah, uh, right? Which is Rameir, presumably. That that's not Mukudashis. Rabbiochanan says they both went on one pasuk. The same pasuk, both both ways. Why? Pasuk says, "Say ye lecha mikatshe." This is for you, mikatshe kachim. Mina ish from the fire. Rabbi Yudah Saber lecha lecha tzarecha. The kachim kachim that goes to the kohen. This is yours. Whatever you need it for. You want to marry an isha with it belongs to you. It's not mamon gavah. It belongs to you. Once once you get your share, you can do with it what you want. 
But the Yossi Sofer Kaish, no, it's like the fire, meaning it's like the stuff burnt on the Mizbeach, like the Amorim burnt on the Mizbeach, or like the carbon Ola, where the meat's burnt on the Mizbeach. Ma'esh Achila, just like the Esh on the Mizbeach, is just to eat it. You can't do anything. The Mizbeach is not entitled to do anything else with it. It's just to, to eat, to consume it. Afunami Lachila, it's only for consuming. In other words, you're entitled to eat the Kachikachim for consumption, but you can't do anything you want with it. Amr Bielchanan. Rabbi Elkin says, so here we have Rabbi Yud apparently argued with the mayor and Rabbi Yossi and our mission. Rabbi mayor and Rabbi Yossi both told you can't eat Kaddish Nisha with the meat of either Kachim Kalim or Kashi Kachim. Um, Rabbi Elkanan, Nimnu Bukhamu, but at the end they took a vote and they and they decided, I'm a Kaddish Bechalko Shal Kashi Kachim, Ben Kashi, Bechalko Ben Kashi Kachim, Ben Kashi Kachim, low Kiddish. In other words, Rashi says, they took a vote. Rabbi Omer, most of the people said, Ain of Kiddishes. In other words, even Rabbi Yudah retracted his opinion. He first said he is with Kedushin, he went in against the mayor, he didn't want to fight, you know, he, the, these guys are coming to fight with me, and he based on the post, he says, that you could, that it is yours. But Rabbi Amar Adan Rabbi says, the Machlokas, Amar Abaya, Abaya says, Kavos Rabbi Yochum Mestavra. It's likely like Rabbi Yochum, that even Rabbi Yehuda changed his mind, right, and he reversed his opinion because they took a vote. And they took a vote. The Chazmar of Chaz said, Rabbi Yochum Mishabra, the Chazmar of Yehuda, Yehuda retracted his opinion. And like we saw, like our Mishnah, that's not Mishnah, Rabbi Yehuda is not, Rabbi Yehuda is not mentioned in our Mishnah, is arguing in this case, because he retracted his view. And he agrees, we all agree, that if you're Mekanish with the meat of Kachi Kachim or Kachi Kalim, it's not Mekodesh. Why? Because it's Mishuch and Gabal Kazach. You're eating God's food, it's not your food. How does Rabbi say that, that it's likely like Rabbi Yochum? Because he's going to bring a price up. Which shows that you're not allowed to exchange. Kornim can't say, "Listen, I'll eat, I'll take some mincha and I'll exchange it for your meat." You know, I'm I'm on a I'm on a vegetarian diet. I'll have the flour, you have the meat. We'll exchange, and we'll play games well, with their I'm value. Here. You can't do that. You're entitled to eat. You're not entitled to do business with and exchange and stuff like that. And since we say that this price that it brings down is from the Sephras, which is uh, the author, which is Rabbi you see, Rabbi Yudah retracted his opinion, and he holds that. Kachi Kachim or Kachim Kalim meat does not belong to you. It does not belong to the coin. You're entitled to eat it, but you can't do business with it or cash an issue with it. I'll pick it up tomorrow, Mr. Shem. Have a good day. Well, I didn't listen.